Today's video, we're going to go over a problem from spring 2017's midterm 2. Um, it's going to be, it's called Coin Game, and it is a dynamic programming problem. So I'm going to go over the theory, um, how to solve this on midterm first, and then we kind of want to move on to code and implementation, which feel free to skip if you don't want to see it. But I'm going to like kind of start off with a naive implementation, and then slowly optimize both the um, time efficient efficiency and also the space efficiency of our code. Um, I think it's a good example because in this class, a lot of things are theoretical, whereas now I'm going to kind of go through something that's more practical and that you may see on um, in your interviews. So let's get started. First, uh, the problem statement is we have two players, and they both share um, an array of coins, right? In this case, we have an array A with N coins. And players are going to alternate turns to pick either the leftmost or rightmost element of the array. And once they pick one of those elements, they remove it from the array, and the player's score is going to be the sum of all the coins that they pick. Now, once player, so let's say with P1 and P2. So once player P1 picks a coin, P2 now picks from the remaining um, elements, and it has to be the, the edge. Right, so in this case, if I had one, something like this, right? So player one goes, picks a coin. Let's say they pick um, seven. Now player two has to pick between 15 and one. All right, so player two could, for some reason, pick one. And, well, that's a bad choice on player two's part. And now player one can pick 15, and so on. OK, so what we want to now is that assume both players are going to play optimally in the case that both players are going to want to maximize total score. And we want to find the maximum possible score for the current player or the starting player. So let's say player one starts here, right? Player one would pick, uh, let's see, if player one picks seven, then player two is going to pick 15, and then we're going to get eight. No, so we don't do that. But if player one picks one, player two has to pick between seven and eight. Um, player two is going to pick eight. Player one is going to pick four, right? So you see, there's like kind of a lot of ways to for player one and player two to move. Um, I actually don't know the optimal solution for this array, and I don't kind of want to figure it out. But anyway, you can realize that it's not greedy because if I if player one picks seventeen immediately, you let player two pick fifteen, right? That's not something. This is not something you want to solve greedily. You kind of want to think about, OK, if I make a choice, if let's say I pick one of these um, coins, let's say 7, what's the best score that player 2 can pick, right? So from player 1's pers uh, from players one's viewpoint, I can take this score, take this coin, and then we ask, OK, what, like, we know that player two is going to maximize player, um, his or her own score. So that means player one is going to want to minimize the best score that player two can pick, right? So player one is going to take a coin such that it is going to, right, I'm going to take this coin, and we want to min player two's best score, right? That's, <clears throat> that's kind of what we're figuring out. But remember that our um, solution, our function is supposed to be within P1's um, viewpoint. So P1 max own score, right? That means if so you, if we're always from player one's perspective, player one will always maximize the score, and player two will always minimize the score. Because in this case, um, we are looking at the score, in this case, is the same as player one's score. Right? So P1 wants to max, and P2 want to min 
this thing, right? So this is what we care about. This is the we trying to find the best score for play, like best score here. So that's the final sub problem. Okay, let's think about this. So at each point, right? So if I took these two coins in the first two um, turns for player one, player two, respectively, and I'm left with a smaller array. So in our sub problem, we can think about that. Okay, I have like at at some point in the game, my array is smaller, right? But we know that the array is has to be in contigu uh, is continuous, so we can define i and j as endpoints, right? So in this case, I would have i as one and j as three as the two endpoints, right? So i and j is going to indicate what kind of array I have left from the original, and I'm going to say let's call s of i j as the max summum score that the current player, that the current player, so in this case, we're going to pop up P1, can obtain with a small array. Uh oh, why is this? With the array from a i all the way to a j, right? So that's our small array here because um, we're gonna pick from the end, the left side or the right side, and at some point we're gonna get a small array. So I'm gonna define this as my um, as my subproblem, s of i j. So let's think about this. At the very beginning, s one starts with score zero. Right? <clears throat> so now player one has a choice, and that choice is going to be take the left, right, left, and right. Now, when I take the left, I'm going to have one and seven. But this isn't just like a normal knapsack choice question where, oh, at every turn, I can take either this or I can choose this value or skip it. So in this case, what happens is that. Once I once player one makes a choice, player two comes in and is gonna want to like minimize <clears throat> the score, right? So here I'm gonna I have P1 is gonna take a left and a right. Okay, so I define my star problem as always within the perspective of the current player. Right? So this means when I take left or right, I like I'm gonna add something, and this is going to be the score that player two will give uh, player one like if player two plays optimally. So that means player two is going to try to minimize this, right? Because this is for player one. So on player two's perspective, if it's uh, player two's turn, he or she is going to be, OK, let's see if we can minimize the score that um, <coughs> player one can get. So in this, uh, this is kind of like a zero sum game, in which case that they're, they're, you have two adversarial um, uh, players, and they try to their best is going to be the other's worst. So in this case, the best score for player one is going to be the worst score for player two. So from player two's perspective, the best score for player two is going to be the worst score for player one, which means that <clears throat> player one is going to try to maximize a left and a right. So I'm going to define so we first know that player one is going to always want to maximize the choice of left <clears throat> and the choice of right. I just did a subscript. That um, doesn't matter. But OK, let's think about what's going to happen next. So what's the best score that if player one picks the left side, what's the best score that player two will allow player one to have? right? So this is actually going to be a min because player two is going to be like, OK, this is your score. I'm trying to minimize it as we're going to play optimally. So player two is going to min. But let's think about this. What are the subproblems that we're going into? So player one, so let's say, let's suppose 
player one takes the left, right? <clears throat> I and J is here. Player two now has two choices, right? Player two can either take this or take this one. If player two picks eight, the sub problem that player one has is going to be S of I plus two and J, right? I pick left, and then player two also chooses left. Now, <clears throat> if I pick, so if uh, player one picks the left and player two picks the right, I have this problem, I minus one, J, well, I plus one, J minus one, right? So now I go I, I have this array left, which is gonna be, we're gonna move in I and J indices in one step. All right, now what, what if I pick seven instead as player one? So if I pick seven as player one, again, player two has two choices. Player two can pick this one, which will give us S of I, right? I doesn't move. And we are left starting at this, um, at four, which is gonna be j minus two, right? Because we're only gonna be able to pick the leftmost or the rightmost. So player two can't just pick the num uh, this number here. And finally, if I pick right, <coughs> and then player picks this one, I now have s of i plus one, right? And i minus one, and these are equal, right? So we essentially have three subproblems that we compute. Okay, so if player one picks uh, the left score, then player two is gonna minimize the best score that player one can obtain using um, the small array that player two gives player one. So here I'm gonna say player one is gonna have the min of i plus two and j and i plus one and j minus one. So this is saying, I pick, uh, player one picks left and then player two picks left. This is player one picks left, player two picks right. right. And I also want to add the current um, score, right? Because I'm picking the leftmost value. It doesn't matter what array that player two gives me, I'm still going to add the value that I'm picking, which is going to be A of I. The leftmost, the leftmost value to my score. <clears throat> so that's where the i comes in, the subscript. And now I have r of j is going to equal to the min of i plus 1, which is i picked right, uh, player 2 picks left, j minus 1, and then i and j minus 2. And let's add the value I am adding <clears throat> to my score. Right, so to recap, player one makes two choices, um, has two choices to make. Player one can pick left or right, and given whether, what player one picks, player two has two choices, and player two can either pick left and right, and it's gonna minimize the best score that player one can obtain, right? So this is minimizing the best score that player one can obtain using the smaller arrays. <clears throat> okay, and we just, Right, so this is saying I add this total for me, and I'm gonna add. <clears throat> so these are gonna be my best possible score given these pos uh, these two subarrays, and I know that player two is gonna minimize my score. Right, so I add my point to the min of two possible choices, and same thing for here. And then finally, knowing player two is gonna um, adversarially minimize my score, I pick the best score out of these two choices. <clears throat> and now we consider the base cases. Um, there's gonna be three, uh, whereas one of them you have to use, the other two may or may not. Um, you and the other one's either or that you will pick depending on your implementation, which I will show uh, later. So if the first choice is S of I J is gonna be equal to A of I if Right, I'm left with one value, I have to pick it. <clears throat> now, the other choice is this. I'm gonna get no points if my indices 
um, in, my, in the seasonal match. So if my leftmost goes past my rightmost, I get zero points. And finally, we can max a of i, a of i plus one. So if I'm right next to each, so if two elements left, I can pick any of those two and they're next to each other. So I can just say, um, pick the ma max of those two. So this one, you have to have in um, your implementation, whereas these two are interchangeable. Okay, um, and then we will go over to runtime. Um, for in terms of runtime, so let, let's say i and j, right? Like how are we iterating this? Think about this. Like for every possible value of i, I can have every possible value of j. In the case that i can span from 0 to n, and also j can span from 0 to n, which means that my runtime is going to be n squared, right? Because at each point, I'm going to just, if you look at the array here, at each value, I take um, one of these in, right? Now I have like a smaller, it's basically, you give an array, and you compute every possible combinations of i, j such that it's valid, which is going to be n squared, because um, both i and j are within 0 to um, 1 to n, or 0 to n minus 1. Right, so i, j is going to be... 1, 2, n. Okay, cool. So that's the theoretical part. Now let's kind of move on to the code. Um, and the code is going to be in zero indexing because I'm going to write it in Python. And there are some places. So I'm going to start off with the most naive version. <clears throat> okay, actually, I'm going to keep this video just about the how to um, approach this problem on the midterm. If you would like to, I'm going to make, I'm going to add. Um, I'll make another video for about how we're going to implement this from scratch <clears throat> and optimize it as we go, because that's going to take a bit longer. And so that video is going to be the next one on this playlist, or you can go find it in the um, link that which I'll put in the description.